It is a beautiful Sunday, and today we have chosen to pack our uh, Plurtis de um, This is Audrey. She's my beautiful model. We'll be demonstrating everything. She's the brains behind the operation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and admit right now that things are a little ramshackle what we're doing. We don't know if it's going to work, and uh, we hope so though. Um, so first thing we're going to do here is uh, we're packing this 55, no hold on, I can't remember how big it is, I'll post it, um, this cooler, relatively large cooler, full of um, our straw here, which is pretty already shredded up. Um, I bought this for about four dollars a bag, which is about 16 pounds of straw. So that was pretty cheap. So I'm trying to keep this stuff cheap down here. Okay, step two is um, we're boiling, or we're getting the water up to pasteurization temperature, kind of a little higher, right? 180. Yeah, we're looking for about 180 because it'll drop in this whole process. Um, so basically this is an outdoor cooker. That is a 30 quart um, vessel and um, it, uh, it's not big enough for all, this, all the straw that I wanted to pasteurize so <laughs> we realized we had a cooler which could hold quite a lot and we just finished uh, shredding and putting the straw in here as you can see and um, this is also the second batch we're doing today, and we wanted to video the second batch because we would look a lot smoother doing first it. Because yeah, first one was rough. We realized this thing took about almost two whole of these things full to fill it, so um, uh, and to uh, submerge all the straw. So we're gonna get this up to temp, and then we're gonna put it in here, and um, and then we're gonna use some bricks to weigh it down. And then we're gonna let that sit for about an hour. Um, that's yeah, it. That's it. Okay. Hi. Okay. So this first one's out the temperature. We didn't lose any temperature last time we did this, um, so we're doing it 175 because it doesn't really fall that much. We found. I'm gonna put this pro temperature thermometer deep into the, uh, the straw. Do a couple of these on the sides just to hold it down so it doesn't float too much. two of these to fill it up. So this will be one. Yeah. All right, so just putting the second load of this water in here. I think we might have too much, which will be fine with me. Yeah, it's starting to float. different things about pasteurization, but they say between 140 and 160. I took notes from some other stuff where it's kind of get it up to 180 because it'll drop. This cooler hasn't really dropped the temperature. Yeah, so it's just want to get it so things are staying down. That's about a, the best we're going to do. Ah! And, uh, we're gonna let that sit for like 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, so that will be pasteurized, sort of like steeping pasteurized, rather than like when you continue to heat it, because I just don't have a big enough vessel. All right, so this has been hanging out somewhere between 160 and 170 for an hour. I'm just gonna pull the plug and drain it. Try not to burn myself in the process. Yeah, that's that. Okay, so now we're up top here on our uh, patio, and uh, Audrey's wiping uh, some alcohol down there um, on the table we're going to be using. We've got the cooler. It is now uh, drained, and we're going to take it. We're going to put it up on this table, and we're going to spread out the 
straw on this table and let it cool. So we have laid the straw out on the table after sterilizing it, more or less. Um, yeah, we do this outside, um, but it is because the um, mycelium of the oyster mushroom is very strong and very virile. And so it can kind of colonize this stuff pretty quick once it's in the bag and uh, and out uh, outpace the uh, contamination, or at least that's the hope. This steam rolling off the end of there. We'll probably flip it, you know, you get a temperature gauge and you start kind of poking around and you see... Um, it, some areas are hotter than others. Yeah, some little pockets are hotter than others, so it's good to kind of flip it around a little bit and, and every now and then. Yeah, and um, we'll just keep measuring it. It takes about 15-20 minutes to cool down. Okay, so I'm just cleaning off my uh, gloves between the bags. So we've got these bags. We've got um, gusseted uh, spawn bags. I don't know what you call these. Gusseted filter bags. There we go. And uh, she's cleaning off her hands. She's gonna crack that open. We're packing it this way. A lot of people do. I'm in these long long bags with logs. I just happen to have these filter bags right now. I don't think you even really need to have a filter on the bag for this process. You could use a trash bag. So, it didn't show, but oh, I took um, grain spawn and I shook it over all the top of this. You can see all that rye grain mixed in. And I just put it over the top um, I'm, you know, a lot of people do a sprinkle it around and stuff, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to kind of grab some as we go off the top, and it ends up being in sort of layers throughout the bag because you grab some, grab some straw, push it all down. What else, honey? Just pack it in. Try to pack it as tight, tightly as you can, so there aren't any air pockets. And you can see the green spawn intermixed. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of measurements this whole process. This all the all this straw that you can see on the table was six about six pounds of straw that we were able to fit into that cooler. Dry. Then we dry, 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 dry. And um, it now weighs a total of something, I think we calculated maybe like 20, 25, 26 pounds of wet weight straw because we were able to, we, this is our second batch today, we were able to pack about six of these medium sized um, filter patch bags and, and they weigh anywhere between four and five pounds each. So, do your math there. Um, but the amount of grain we use, I had a four pound grain bag from Field and Forest, I believe is the company that I purchased, and um, um, that was on rye grain, and uh, I put about half on the first batch, half on the second, so that was around two pounds of grain spawn on top of this 25 or 26 pounds of wet weight um, straw. And you can see some of these pieces are kind of long, and I know that we're supposed to chop them up more, but we're lazy. And, you know, a lot of the things we're doing are a little bit uh, unorthodox here, so hopefully this actually works well. Just going to kind of scoop it up. We're using twist ties, I mean, sorry, uh, pull, what are they called? Zip ties to close the bags. Um, you can buy this thing that's called a impulse sealer, I believe. It will just, it's kind of like a plastic sealer. Um, Flat, or else you get this weird lopsided kind of... Yeah, you know, I mean, the good thing about these gusseted bags is they sit square, like on a table and on a shelf. Um, we're going to reshape these a little bit. Um, and a lot of squishing going on. It's good. They like to be, they like to be squished. Our, our table's kind of rickety, so this might be our, its last, our, its last ride. All right, and then she zip ties it, all right. So we're using these arrowheads, these broad tip arrowheads, 
to poke holes. These are razor sharp on each end, focus. And um, poking holes in these straw bags. And that's where the mushrooms are gonna come out of because they like that oxygen when they're ready to fruit. Um, the idea is that they're something like three to four inches away from each other. We're sort of doing, like here, keep that in my face. We're sort of doing sort of like a domino effect, like a five, like one, two, three, four, five on the front, two on those gusseted sides, and then the same on the face. So, um, I don't know, maybe you could do more, but uh, this is what we're doing. Um, and then we're gonna do all those, and then we're gonna put them in the grow room, or the, which is also the inoculation room, or the colonization room. Uh, which is or what they'll the be doing. Steam room. The steam room. Uh, so this is the tent in the garage. It is pretty crazy. Suspended from the roof here. PVC, plastic, sheet. I don't know what it wants. To... Yeah, um, you know these are little greenhouse clips onto like three-quarter inch PVC pipe, and then plastic. And inside we've got. Oh, good, it's going. We've got my fogger going, running down, and uh, these are the here. These are the bags that we did today. Looking pretty cool, except for that funky, weird one on the bottom. But uh, you know, we're feeling pretty good about it. Um, this is a fogger unit. I don't know. I got to do a whole other video on this tent because it is something else. Uh, maybe good, mostly probably bad, but. Uh, these are gonna be good. We're gonna keep them at about, uh, you know, that there's no cooling in here. It's just the temperature of the world out here, and it's gonna be somewhere between. Right it's a, it's 80. In here. Yeah, but these, the reason that we did these particular mushrooms is because they can handle a higher heat. They are a tropical strain. This is um, day 11, actually, and um, we saw some pinning yesterday, and now. Come on, focus. Now we've got some primordia, some babies going. Focus, man. Yeah, there it is. Some over there, some over there. Kind of poking through the bag in various places. Let's focus over there. All right, let's, it's really getting picky on its focus here. Um, got some here, some there. You can see they're pink. This is kind of how they looked yesterday. Well. It's like they're in there and they're starting to pin but they're not quite breaking the bag. Here's some more that are in there just kind of hanging out and some more that are just breaking through. Um, some little babies here. Boom! Coming to see the world. That was some mold that I covered up. Um, been having some contamination issues. I tossed about eh, four bags or at least isolated four bags out of here so they wouldn't I don't know spread mold to the other ones okay this is day 12 I think at night shot a little this morning is it pretty big reference here's my hand so they're still still going but they're all doing pretty good. Okay, we are on day 13 now, and some of these guys are definitely ready to pick. Not those so much, but these ones in the middle. See how they're starting to turn up like that? That's pretty much their mature state, those little corners. Focus. These guys are huge. Uh, down here, we got some more. So, not, not so bad, not so bad. Uh, I'd say it's a pretty good uh, experiment. I'm gonna just pick them, pick a lot of these today, and then I'm going to, uh, I guess, pick the rest of them as they become kind of mature.